Welcome, everyone. We are back with Saturday Morning Now It's been a while. Uh, I am Graveyard, and let's just get right into this. We have so much to talk about. So I'd like to introduce our panel for today. The one and only Puzzle Queen, the Rattler of the Sabres, the one and only Metzo. <laughs> Rattler of the Sabres. I was yes. like, I started to look all like, nice when you introduced me, and then I started laughing. Good morning. Hi, Chris. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Sam Long. How's it going? You good? Oh, good. You're good? Good. Good. Caffeinated? I'm, good. I'm, good. I'm about to be caffeinated. I know it's been a while, but we got to bring else, everyone else on the show. I would say if we had a subclass of this person, he would probably be a very good necromancer. <laughs> the one and only should do. Hey, <laughs> would you be a necromancer? I don't know how I feel about that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that's okay, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey Chris, how's it going? But if you are a necromancer, we have the one and only immortal rogue herself. Immortal rogue, yeah. Frank. I'm an immortal rogue. You know, I've yeah. never played a rogue. I've always wanted to. They're, so thank you. I appreciate fun. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like bringing stuff up and like the streams I, and stuff, and vote. you guys are like a mortal rogue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you know. I Hello. I still vote Draconic Soul Sorcerer for you, but you know. <laughs> You're a little too dragon happy for you know I'm pro dragon, so <laughs> that would be an interesting episode, you guys, to show Kyber Cave and Distance Thirty classes who we oh, would be. That would be awesome. It, yeah. yeah, we should do that. Like do a massive crossover. <laughs> and we just like bring we everybody on. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, yeah. all right. Maybe this after is, new order premieres, we could do something like that. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, but we have so much to talk about. We've been off for about two months ish at this point in time, but I hope we've had two months to stay caffeinated and have all the cereal we possibly could. But let's get into this. You know, first and foremost, we have uh, what something I am very excited for. It's it was a book at some point in time in the nineties, and this new Star Wars property coming out. Tales of the Empire. I'm super excited about this. I rewatched the trailer this morning just so because so I could have it in my mind. And I, you know, and I thought it was going to be Thrawn, but it's actually Elspeth. And I really like that more because when I was watching Ahsoka, mm -hmm. I was like, I want to know more about this Elspeth because like we saw her for like a brief second in like a brief fight scene really uh in uh mandalorian and then she came back for that and i was like what's her deal tell me more about this chick i love her i love to hate her <laughs> and so yeah so i was like yes and then it's barris i was like whoa we're going with the green it's the green team because mm. <laughs> barris has a green you know Makeup choice, I guess. Complexion. I complexion. complexion. That's it. Complexion. Thank you. <laughs> and and like we all know, Elsbeth gets in imbued with the green <laughs> in a certain a certain show that mm -hmm. shall remain nameless that I've said like four times already. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so she, you know, that's kind of how like I was like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I, I'm excited. Um, Metzo, I know you're... How, how do you feel about this? So, okay, I wrote down my stuff. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know a lot about Lady Elsbeth. So mm -hmm. my view is coming from someone that doesn't really know much about this. I mm -hmm. said so what I love about villain origin stories is that the writers usually have a way to make you feel for the villains. Because, like, which is something anyone can relate to because real life is messy and not every villain is just straight cut and dry evil. Um, I think it looks good, but for some reason, like I said, because I don't know the history, the excitement that I would hope to stir in me isn't there just because I don't know a whole lot. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess we'll just, I'll just see how her story plays out and her, like, origin in a sense. Yeah. That's I like it. I was going to say, I like to watch show, a lot of times I like to rewatch shows after I learn something new about a character mm -hmm. just to see if that like colors their performance. Like, you know, if I start seeing stuff like that, that I didn't mm -hmm. notice. So I kind of like it for that too. I just like that they're doing origins and they're doing it in the animated form. 
Because, like, Barris originally started, like, she's an animated character from Clone Wars and mm-hmm. then, and Elsbeth, and then all the Ahsoka stuff in Tales of the Jedi. I mean, I'm like, yeah, like, give me more Star Wars origin shit. I love it. Sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just all right, like, family yeah, friendly. Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> Maybe I've had too much caffeine this morning. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Oh, but. What about Mr. Bounty Hunter himself? (laughs) Uh, This is a reference to something else, but uh, (laughs) uh, no, I think it's I think it's really cool. I'm excited for it. Uh, I like that they're using animation, kind of the shorter, uh, the shorter format, to tell these more like obscure stories. Like you know, I I don't know what casual Star Wars fan is like. Yeah, I need a you know. Oh, what happened to Barris? Like, I don't think most people remember her. Or probably whatever. not. Yeah. I probably wouldn't care that much about, oh, I, you know, where did Elizabeth come from or whatever. But it's nice to have this format, like you were talking about, with, with a book or mm-hmm. whatever, where it's these more uh, obscure stories that are like, well, there's this random character. What, you know, what'd they do? So it's, it is very, like, uh, kind of harkening back to legends or whatever. Mm-hmm. Just kind For of sure. having these much smaller stories that we can be like, well, you know, this is a cool little tidbit or whatever. And then if you've seen it, you kind of have a, yeah, you have a different view of the character. So. Oh, for, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, I, as everyone knows that watches all the stuff I do across a couple of channels here, I am in love with the Legends books. <laughs> mm-hmm. What are you laughing about there, Metzo? Ray girl turned her water bottle so that we had the logo. <laughs> <laughs> we got merchandise now. Um, so we got merch people. Oh. We got merch. Yeah. So you know, I like I said I love the the Legends books in the '90s and early 2000s. We had the Tales of series. We had a couple of things. We had the Tales of Empire, Tales of the Jedi, Tales of Bounty Hunters, which mm-hmm. you know we got to learn about all the bounty hunters that we just saw essentially their feet. You know the the <laughs> in in you know um, Empire Strikes Back, right? Mm-hmm. And my hope was that kind of filter in some of these canon stories, we get a little bit more background for it. Because I'd love for everyone to know, you know, the I don't remember the reptile species bounty hunter, his story Correct. and everything. Yeah, yeah. So I'd <laughs> love to see. You know, what I mean, I like. I, I think it's a great way to do it, and they're doing it. Is like I said in that book style with characters that we've seen. Mm-hmm. And I think this is just one step closer to bringing more of the legends stuff because there's no reason why those tales of can't be canon, you know, because we learn about Max Rebo in Tales of Jabba's Palace, you know, that the band and 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 uh, all that stuff that goes with it, you know, they're and how he's a Sith Lord and controlling all of this in right. a little finger esque <laughs> fashion, right, <laughs> and. And their music style, which is not family friendly, to say that it was made something else. <laughs> well, <laughs> for those who know, no. Oh yeah, you know. we know. Uh, we know. Trend, uh, trend o- trend mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think that's no. Are no, they Trandoshans? No. Well, I don't know. Jack Hero isn't, but like the bounty hunter, the lizard guy is. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, and we we learn more about IG88, and that's a perfect reason to bring back Watiti to voice IG88. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. That'd be great. Uh, Why not? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I so that, I it's great. Yeah, that, that's like I said. That's I love the legends. I was so mad in 2015 when they got rid of that from being canon. So yeah, I still maybe. And it looks like they're slowly bringing it in, bringing in yeah. what they want and mm-hmm. the stuff that they don't want. I do have a question for all for the whole panel yes. uh, about this before we move on. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> how how does everybody feel that they're shorts? It says they're animated shorts versus the. Like a regular TV episode. Yeah. What do we consider shorts at this point in time? That see, that's mine. Yeah. It's like, is it like a, a set? it has to be more than a couple of minutes? I mean, the group stuff works because it's a couple I'd of minutes. I assume like ten to fifteen is you know, yeah. Like, yeah. in my head. But the the problem, like I guess the only problem I have with shorts, but for, maybe it's like them trying to dip their toe into this this show mm-hmm. and see if it would work well for like a full feature show, but um is just like with loki or whatever like the when the story is good 
I get mad when the episodes are so short. Right. Yeah. So that's the only, I guess that's the, my only like sad thing to know that it's just short in that sense. But I also understand mm-hmm. what you said at the same time. Yeah. I hope that it uh, is less like, oh, it has to be 10 minutes. It has to be 15 minutes. I hope it kind of frees them up to be like, okay, the story is this long. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not forced to be like, okay, we need to make this 30 minutes. We need to make this an hour or whatever. So, you know, and it I could have it's... been that they wrote it and then just decided that shorts were better for it. Yeah. That's that's what I'm hoping happened. So, yeah, I I mean like yeah. yeah. In the in the books there's probably about 8 to 10 stories. So each one is probably about 20 to 30 pages, which essentially a page a minute would be perfect for it. Yeah. If... yeah. There, there you go. Yeah. So. <clears throat> well, and some of the pages may be more like internal, which they could sh- which mm-hmm. you don't have a lot of dialogue, so that can make it shorter as well. Yeah. Also, like the Tales of the Jedi, it was like a, one episode was in two parts. It was like mm. a, like the first one was Ahsoka and Dooku, and so it was like half Ahsoka, half Dooku. You know, so I wonder if they're just splitting them up instead, and that's why they're shorts now and not full mm. episodes. And so, and you know, and their tales may not be as long, and that may be why they're shorts this season. Next season, it, yeah. they may go to a longer form. We don't know. And, that's what and you saying, can pretty much of... do what you want in streaming. It there's yeah. not really any rules except yeah, you know, kind of don't show up. kids bad no. images. But right. you know, I mean, that's that's about and it. If you have any, have a disclaimer at the beginning. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. I. I I at first I was like, man, I feel like we're being jit. And then I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I vaguely remember <laughs> they could be 15 minutes long. A short just means that it's not a you know 30 minute right. episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, cool. Uh, that was my big question. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, we might as well stay in the 90s world here. <laughs> well, you know, I'm a 90s girl <laughs> in the 90s world. Um <laughs> So if if you want, to, we're just going to kind of talk about if those have seen X Men ninety seven. We're at obviously we on another channel, our sister channel, you know, Distance Third. <laughs> we go into huge talks about X Men ninety seven and full length discussions with it. Um, Matt, so have you watched any of X Men ninety seven? We've kept up with it, yeah. So what do you think of it so far? Okay, so it has been a while <laughs> since an animated show <laughs> made me feel so excited. <laughs> the mix of redoing animations to include in the opening from the original run and the iconic music fills me with nostalgia. Uh, the animation is really the same style like as the original, but it's like the HD modern day version mm-hmm. of that animation. And I and uh, Chris, I, I agree. I absolutely love it so much. The storyline had me caring for the characters more than I actually expected. It was like the show that when my husband and I go up for bed at night and we go, he chooses something to watch, and I see. Uh, that he's bringing up Disney Plus for us to watch it. I get all stood up and I'm like, all right. I'm like, I'm ready for it. Um, and there's something about the freedom and animated shows to have the ability to tell the outrageous storylines with like each episode. Mm-hmm. Like the the demon that was kind of like within Storm in a sense and such like that. Because uh, it's also the same voice actress playing the demon. Um, and in such is so much fun because you would not be able to just do that on a live action show. Like every episode have that, you know, you don't have the budget for that normally. Um, with some OG voice actors returning to it also gives that feeling that the show never left. And I, I got all sappy here. I said, it may have left new episodes airing for a long time, but in the fans, it never left our hearts. <laughs> Aww. That, that was Aww. it. Would you I say lo- you'll remember oh. it? Oh gosh! <laughs> I love Gambit to death. Oh, that was a terrible oh! piece of words. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I do love it. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm mean, like I said, we we have uh, our sister channel, Distance Stirring. Frey, Fours, myself, and Phil really get into the nitty gritty. We probably talk an hour, hour and a half per episode. We love it. You know, we expand a. 28 minute show episode into <laughs> something much longer than I can that. To that. <laughs> I can see why that happens. There's really just so much in each episode. Yeah. And, and just because, you know, you know, nerd has been gone and we're 
kind of picking up. We would have done a little show and predictions on here. We'll get back mm-hmm. into that as with new shows that come out this year with other nerdums. Um, but no, I I absolutely love X Men ninety seven. I love the original series because I remember when it got in syndication, waking up for school and being on Fox Kids and just hearing the theme music when you wake up was a perfect way. Yeah, just a perfect way to start your start your That's morning. That's your alarm now, isn't it? Just like it this. Is. Saturday morning, no doubt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, I made the wife watch it well before this was even announced, like probably good eight years ago. I think before Days of Future Past came out, I'm like, all right, you're watching the Days of Future Past X-Men run of it so you understand where it's where it's coming from i also had her watch dark phoenix saga and stuff like that in preparation for disappointment of dark phoenix <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's it, for, for me it is it's fantastic and it's a great way for my kids as well as x-men are coming into the mcu at some point in time to get more of a backstory behind x-men who they are and really care about them when we actually see them more so on screen mm-hmm. so thank you Frey, <laughs> I know you have big thoughts and big opinions, but just the overall <laughs> opinion of it so far. <laughs> um, all right. So when it first came out in the 90s, and I was definitely old enough to watch it. Uh, <laughs> you make it sound like you weren't. Like, I definitely was old enough. I definitely was old enough to watch <laughs> it. Uh, I, uh, I was very mature for my age. I was so <laughs> mature. I totally knew what was going on. I and I like I've always loved X Men, like the comic itself. Mm-hmm. Like you know, I was a huge like New Teen Titans fan, X Men fan, and I, those were the comics that I would get every week, or well, when they came out, you know. Uh, and I have like a lot of the back issues. I have the first appearance of Dazzler and you know Kitty Pride and stuff like that. First appearance of Rogue. So you could say I'm a fan. And I liked the original series because it did try to stick as close to the comics as mm-hmm. it could. And uh, I feel like 97 has upped the game, turned it up to 11, so to speak, uh, for you 80s kids. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and I think that, you know, I like it. I really like where they're going. It's definitely darker. Mm-hmm. and and i'm not i'm not sad about that you know i mean well some of it gives me a sad but i'm not like overall sad about it and uh i like how they're framing the villains i would like to see more villains like in the life death storyline i actually thought that sh- it was shadow king and not adversary mm-hmm. at first just because shadow king and storm are are pretty well connected as well and from her time in egypt and i was like oh that'd be that's a really deep cut if they bring shadow king in there so like there and there is some where i'm just like wait a minute who's that again and then there's sometimes where i'm like oh my god that's this character you know i'm like how, how you know they brought her back you know and so i have those weird moments too but yeah I, I really like it i like what they're doing with it i like the little nods to the comics i like little nods to the current comic storylines mm-hmm. too like not you know hey this is the storyline from you know this episode or this is this this issue of the new comics but um i like that they're kind of blending it all in and giving us a good Inter- reintroduction to the characters before mm-hmm. they bring them into the MCU canon. This all came out, you know, before Deadpool's coming out. We know Deadpool's going to be a cameo fest, uh, a bloody cameo fest, but a cameo fest. So it's it's smart on MCU's part and Disney Plus's part because it has really revived their streaming service. So we will probably get more animated stuff just because of that. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. and I, you know, I don't mind that. I wouldn't, I would pay for more animation as long as it's a good story. So yay, 97. But I also have issues with it, which we go into in depth too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, you know, Jubilee was brought on solely because they didn't think people would resonate with Kitty Pride as much as they would with Jubilee. And that's why we didn't have Kitty Pride. And I, I'm a huge Kitty Pride fan. So she has a dragon again, pro dragon. So, <laughs> so yeah. So that's mine. 
I hope I didn't I, take up too much time. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, you, you don't know if you have to watch my crazy theories of how this all ties into Deadpool and Wolverine, which mm-hmm. we're going to be disappointed when it doesn't happen. So. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, you have, like, ruined, and, and ruined Phil's life because he's like, this is not ever going to happen, but <laughs> we really wanted to. <laughs> so... I know Shadu, Shadu, I know you really haven't watched this. I know you haven't participated in our, our well, examining well, X-Men. Well, hold on. No, no, no. I have been editing. You have been editing, <laughs> I yes. Been, I, I have been editing Examining 97. I edited the first two episodes and you guys decided to do it live. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, the first one is two hours long. Oh, I'm aware. I was there. <laughs> uh, oh, I know. Uh, the the second one is much better. So I I do know some things. I don't really have opinions on them, but I know. Some <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Sounds. I like the X sounds show. Fun. It good. Does it? Does it? <laughs> does the editing and watching this make you want to go back and watch the original series? I, I've really... never seen the original series. But does it make you want to go back and watch it? Like, our, our passion for it? Kind of, It's really yeah. the question. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 your your excitement is palpable. It's just a lot. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. And I, I, here's a question I have for everyone here is, while we're getting, you know, freshman year or Spider-Man Origins or Spider-Man Year One, would you rather have that, or would you ha- rather have Spider-Man 97? I mean, do you think this is a way to bring back the one season of Iron Man, the one season of Silver Surfer, the one season of Incredible Hulk, and the fifth season of Spider-Man the animated series with Greg Brady from the Brady Bunch movie coming back to reprise his role as Peter Parker, and we find out what happened to Mary Jane? I would like, I think they need to finish that. If mm-hmm. they just do a season of that and then transition into something else. I mean, I'm fine with that. I do think they need to finish it. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing all that. I think that might be fun. Just like do a season. Do, animation is so weird because there's so much goes into it that them just, you know, going, hey, yeah, let's do this. You know, it, it's harder, I think. You know, if you, you live action stuff, it does have a lot of effects in it, but you have people there, so you don't have to like animate everything. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't mind seeing a Miles Morales based like Spider Verse uh, mm. show either. I wouldn't mind that. Like n- maybe not him, maybe like an- another one of the characters, like maybe Miguel or maybe like, you know, the Spider Woman. And, you know, I'm like that Spider. Like I wouldn't mind seeing stuff like that. I wouldn't. You know, let's do a Tales of the Spider Verse and just do like little things for that. Why not? I would love to see Tales of the Spider Verse in the sense of all the Spider uh, hero characters from across you know, into the Spider Verse yeah. and have like an episode based on one of them. That'd yeah, that might be fun or something like that. I'm just saying there's so many possibilities and there's so many comic book references to go from too. But mm-hmm. I would like to see, I, you know, I want to see what happened to Mary Jane. Everybody wants to see what happened to Mary Jane. So <laughs> not JR. Yeah. Well, what happened to Mary Jane? Well, unfortunately, that series ended and it dealt with um, a movie that was not very successful this year because Madame Web was a huge part of that last yeah. run yeah it was i haven't even seen it and i'm cringing mm-hmm. don't <laughs> i mean so, i, yeah. I haven't but yeah. don't oh, okay. yeah it's just like <laughs> even the stars were like yeah we're just not gonna say that much about it it's gonna be like mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it's just one of those jobs where sometimes the movie you did wasn't very good exactly yeah, for sure but i mean we gotta move on because beetlejuice beetlejuice can't say it a third time. <laughs> Not until the third movie. <laughs> yes. So, Metz, we'll start with you. You watched the trailer, and you I'm sure you've seen the original movie. Oh, how, how do you, yeah. How do you feel okay. about this? Okay, so my guess on the... Because, you know, it opens with them at a funeral service. I am assuming that's Lydia's dad. Jeffrey Jones, he's the yeah. one. Yeah, he's the one who's not seen in the trailer at all. 
Um, and then, you know, what exactly caused Beetlejuice's emergence? You know, we don't know the exact reason. And I think Ortiz plays Lydia's daughter. And I think she just, you know, goes exploring in this old place that her mom grew up in or something, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm excited for some of the OG cast members that did return um, with some really fun ones also, uh, like Ortiz, I like, like her as Wednesday. Um, and seeing the cast and some of the originals returning gets me, like, more confidence in the story, I guess. So I feel like a lot of the OG people wouldn't come back unless it was a good story. Because um, mm -hmm. you don't want to bring... You know, you don't want to have a Ghostbusters moment where you bring a story in and then it's just absolutely horrendous to the point where it just gets retconned because of it. Um, but not now, not seeing Gina and Alex characters kind of gives me like a sad feeling inside, but also with everything that happened with Rust and whatnot, it was kind of understandable. Plus, their characters just may not have fit in the actual storyline, but either way, what are where are they then and will they even address it? Right, because they I don't think it was clear in the original Beetlejuice. It's been a while since I've actually seen the original. Um, like if you know the the ghosts are at a house and they seem to be living in harmony at the end of the first movie, where are they now? Sounds like mm -hmm. it's on the show. Where are they now? Um, but I'm looking forward to it, and I think it's hilarious to be that um Winona just looks uh exactly like she did as Lydia before. Hairstyle, everything is the exact same. Mm -hmm. um it made me giggle that was it i guess awesome. i'm excited I'm, for it though i think you said beetlejuice three times <laughs> <laughs> i may have but it wasn't all together there yeah, you go. Say it all together fray <laughs> uh so i'm excited okay here's what i think is gonna happen all right yeah so her dad dies um and they come back for the funeral i think um she brings him back. I think, I think, um, one owner writer's character, I'm never going to remember their name. Sorry. Lydia. But Lydia. Lydia, uh, Lydia is, brings him back because she wants her father back and she thinks he can help her get him back. And that's what starts this whole thing. Um, <clears throat> and, um, her daughter finds out about it and decides to go ahead and help. And then Beetlejuice like gets, closer to her than Lydia. And then there's this kind of like jealousy thing going on. It's going to be and, a whole faux wedding again with Lydia's daughter. Right. Yeah. And then, um, and yeah. And so then whether we see dad or not, I think that's part of it. So I think it's going to be like that. I think we'll, the priest that's played by Bern Corman at the beginning when they're doing the funeral. yeah um i think he'll be like you know he'll take place of the or the old priest that came in and like there'll be a dance number and everything i think we'll get all of the elements that we got in the first one but i think the twist will be that um that beetlejuice is like he's more interested in lydia's daughter now than he is in lydia and that's going to cause some tension and the whole reason he comes back is because lydia can't take that her dad has passed over and she wants him back. She wants him to inhabit the, you know, be mm -hmm. a ghost in there. And I think that's probably it now. Yeah. I had the same question as Mezzo where, you know, oh. well, sorry. Where are? where are the original, uh, sorry. Uh, you know, the original, uh, happy ghosts. So, I would like to see that too. Hopefully if they fill a quota something. and get to move on or something. Yeah. So, and I think that's where they were going at the end. So they may have that just be like, well, they moved on, you know, mm -hmm. and they may have moved on when Lydia like left because yeah, they were more there good. for her, you know? And yeah, so when true. she left and got married or however the, her having a child happened, uh, well, I mean, we know. know how it happens, but <laughs> yeah. How's it happen? Oh, so, <laughs> welcome yeah. to Metzel's health class. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, that's. But who happened? That's the <laughs> right. Who was it? <laughs> yes. Who's the baby and then daddy? Who's, who's, who is, is the baby daddy? Juice? Oh God. Oh. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That keeps happening. What the yeah. Heck? All right. So. Oh should... my gosh. Oh, we can't hear you, Frey. So while you're figuring it out now, yeah. we can hear you. While you're figuring it out, should do. Uh, um, yeah, so I've I've seen the original. Uh, 
Okay, cool. I mean, <laughs> it looks it looks good. I my reaction with uh, most of these things is, do we need a sequel? We don't. Yeah. But <laughs> we'll see. It, it it might be good. I I don't know. Okay. Is it the whole like um, ha having a sequel versus original ideas? Yeah. Because we're having so many sequels or reboots. Yeah, it's like, oh, this is gonna make money versus oh, this is gonna be a good story, you know. Mm. Gotcha. So like uh I, like like Ryan George's producer guy. This is going to oh, make yeah, us yeah, money. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love Ryan yeah. George. Yeah. Making money is tight. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, I mean so for for me, the the original was perfect. They, you know, they had been in development hell for over thirty years for the sequel, right? right. And everyone you know, knows at this point in time, the sequel was going to be Beetlejuice in Hawaii. That was the original storyline. That was going to be it. <laughs> um, now, for anyone that doesn't remember, there's also a '90s cartoon about Beetlejuice that continued on the story from the original movie. It'd be interesting to see if they make that canon at this point in time. And and so now we need Beetlejuice '97. Yeah, exactly. I would love it if they had like the guy who plays Beetlejuice in the Broadway musical, the original guy, like just cameo in it somewhere. Mm -hmm. That I would love it because people who, I mean, at least enjoy musicals or have seen, you know, he's someone you'd recognize pretty quickly. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, I, Tim Burton has not been good for, the, let's honestly say, the past 15 years uh, at this point in time. Um, and he's coming back to a property he knows that might do good. Is this going to make an Edward Scissorhands too? Probably. Uh, but I have some concerns about what people are saying the synopsis is, is that Lydia has become normal and that her daughter is taking up the, the quirkiness. Now, I think it would have been better the opposite if Lydia was still the strange one and Jenna Ortega played the straight man in, in this movie. Okay. Thank you. I heard <laughs> earlier. Why that she plays teeth? that she plays a straight man and that she realizes that her mom's not that crazy. Yeah. As opposed to her Lydia becoming a normal person. I think I think her character was raised by her grandmother and not Lydia and I think Lydia has been in a mental institution for a while. But there, there if I said the synopsis is saying that she, Lydia is normal now. So Yeah, well, I think she's the werewolf. Uh, so, yeah, and <laughs> my uh, my hope is if we get the sandworms, yeah, that well, it is those. that it stays stop motion. It has to yeah, stop it motion. Yeah, it would it would be it would literally just kill the feeling of the original if you have that as like full on computer animation and not stop motion mm -hmm. like it was. Yeah, it, it'll just kill that feeling of it. Like, um, you can't make an like a try to make an evil dead sequel that's supposed to be like this, uh, like a sequel of like Bruce Campbell's character and not have the campiness that it had in the originals. Like yeah. you can do something kind of like the, the one evil dead one that recently came out with the kids and yeah. stuff, completely different storyline and stuff. It's not like a continuation, but if you try to continue something, you also got to make sure it has that same feeling. As mm -hmm. well. Mm. well, I mean, that's also an interesting thing too. Like, could they just open it up to that universe yeah. and have, cause there are other characters. I mean, granted mm -hmm. it wouldn't be called Beetlejuice, but uh, it, you know, it could well, still live Beetlejuice, in just different people summoning Beetlejuice. Right. Well, right. or it could just be the different characters that come through. Like, you know, cause there's like what the, the magician's assistant that sawed in half at the, in the first one. Then there's the, girl behind the counter and like i mean it, there's the so guy much with the head that was yes yeah. the shrunken head guy like there are so many yeah. other stories you could tell as well and his head like, his head actually got more. his head went and got hung on the the night bus in harry potter right yeah that's exactly <laughs> it uh but yeah so i mean i'm just saying like you could open the universe up i think that that's what other cult ips are finding out because how star wars is doing stuff and i think star wars again star wars innovating the whole thing bringing in different the different types of characters and giving them their yeah. own show or doing the tales and so i see that like i see maybe that's where 
a lot of the stuff is going, reintroduce mm-hmm. the characters, mm-hmm. and then expand the universe. Yeah, I, I do think so. Star Wars lends itself to that a little bit more than this kind of thing. But yeah, no, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. I could see that, but I could, I'm just saying like, I mean, they had the cartoon and that opened it up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And if they do bring the, like the canon, uh, canonness of the cartoon in, then they could really bring that, you know, bring, expand the universe. I mean, heck, right. they're doing it with horror right now too. So it's like, it's not like it's that big of a step and, and Beetlejuice does kind of, it's a horror comedy. So, mm-hmm. and that's huge right now. So. Yeah. It's a good but, time for it. Michael Keaton's amazing. Let's move on. Yes. Speaking <laughs> speaking of of horror, you, horror corner is back with Maxine. Um, I hope everyone's watched. I don't know if anyone has watched the first two Ty West movies. I didn't get to see the trailer. Oh my god! I thought I saw them all. So I watched uh, it. not I'll, the first I'll, two Ty West movies, but yeah, you haven't seen them. No, I have not. Not totally. okay. I'll just kind of go briefly here first. The first first one X was fantastic. It was a good homage to seventies exploitation movies. It felt very Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Last House on the Left, I Spent Near Grave, stuff like that. The second one, Pearl, was awful. Just absolutely <laughs> awful. I am dreading this movie coming out because I have to rewatch that movie for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> first one's great. This one takes place in the 80s, so it's a good homage to that. And they talk about the Night Slasher, which was the serial killer in California in the 80s, that or Night Stalker. Um, yeah, Night that Stalker. Night Stalker. And now that has been done in American Horror Story 85 or 84, whatever it was. And I think this, unfortunately, you know, it makes sense because, you know, first one's in the 70s, this one's in the 80s. But I think it might be capitalizing too much on the 80s nostalgia feel that everyone is doing right now. And I am burned out of the 80s stuff. We need to move past that at this point in time. So yeah. while the trailer looks fantastic, I, I've yet to see what it's going to be. I will be seeing it and I will be doing a, a horror corner review of it when it do, does come out for sure. Awesome. So, nice. uh, should you, did you watch the trailer? I did not. Sorry. I, I I meant to, but it was it just didn't happen. So well, Matt's up. <laughs> so when I wrote, where did my notes go? Yeah, yeah, they are okay. So this movie looks pretty intense. Uh, it kind of not. Uh, it was like, uh, not every story is a fairy tale. Adult film star aspiring like ma- to be a mainstream actress, trying to make it big during the time of a serial killer on the loose. Now. I, my question is, was this a real serial killer that was that? Yes. Okay, I thought so. Um, the Night Stalker. Mm-hmm. So where the story uh, where the story of the killer and her character actually cross is where I'm kind of like, okay, that uh, hopefully it's not like something that the reason they their stories cross is like not stupid in a sense. I do have a suspicion of who I think the killer is just based off of the trailer, but I don't want to give that kind of answer out right now. Uh, but the cast makes me excited. Like I like Kevin Bacon, Giancarlo Esposito, you know, who's mm-hmm. my opinion is absolutely um, amazing. I'm excited just because of those characters. Um, I can't say I'm like crazy excited for it, but I hope it'll be something that delightfully surprises me, which is kind of a funny thing to say about a movie that's supposed to scare you in some way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, it's interesting, you know. But yeah, I, I yeah, it's nice to see something that you feel like hasn't quite been done. It kind of made me think of a slasher mixed in with the investigation of like the Zodiac movie. Mm-hmm. It kind of made me think. Oh, of that, that sounds too. cool! Like that yeah. does sound cool. I, I, you know, I think I've seen clips of the trailer, but not like the whole trailer because mm-hmm. I remember like a Kevin Bacon, Giancarlo Esposito thing. I was like, oh, hey, that's kind of cool. So, um, so yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, like I said, the cast is big. Mia Goth is uh, is the next Scream Queen at this point. Which I don't know. I don't know if I've seen her in anything that I can think of. Did you ever watch the uh, the Cure for Wellness with the guy who played Green Goblin in Amazing Spider Man? Nope. Okay, she's done a lot of horror things. So if you don't watch a lot of horror, uh, but the Cure for Wellness is an underrated movie. But you should definitely check it out. It reminded me of Miley Cyrus. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the, with I'm not sure if it's the actress herself, but the way the character 
mannerisms during speaking reminded me of her. Yeah, so long story short, she was a porn star that wants to be an actual actress. So there you go. <laughs> uh, All right. But yeah, speaking, I could totally see a Miley Cyrus type. Yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. But speaking of crazy things happening in California, Mezzo, tell us about Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I saw Civil War a week ago with my husband on Saturday nights so or our date night. Um, and the acting directory, directing directory, well, the acting, directing, and cinematography of the movie was great. Uh, the story had me caring about the characters and the brutality of the movie itself in every scene, pretty much, whether it be like actual violence or just brutality of what these people are living with their characters every day. Um, and the idea of American Civil War is kind of frightening, just the idea of that. Um, the one thing that really did bother me is the lack of context. So, um, like the reason the reason America is at war within itself is never really divulged. Um, mm. And some of the forces that team up make no sense. So we, we even briefly discussed it during an episode we recorded last night where like Texas and California team up very, very far left versus like far right kind of a thing teaming up. It didn't seem to make sense. And while I understand the director's like point of view saying that, well, Texas and California realized that what they why they weren't getting along was not as big as the picture of the the actual issue they were facing. So they teamed up. I'm like, I can understand that idea, but the actual thought of it happening mm-hmm. isn't great. And um, and that, so I understand the choice of not necessarily divulging it because you're seeing it from the view of the journalist. As a viewer, it was kind of distracting because it's like when you're watching a story about the country you live in your home, your home country looking like a war zone, you naturally desire to know why. And so not knowing and not understanding that like background of it kind of was distracting during the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, It's like that feeling where a a movie ends and they never quite answered a few of the questions and you kind of just get left wondering why, and it's never answered and you just get kind of pissed about it. Um, but the story itself that was told was pretty remarkable. I wouldn't say I'd watch it again because it's not like one of those movies that you enjoy watching. And you're like, oh, I can't wait to see that again. It's kind of like, well, I made me feel things. It did its job, but I'm. Pr- it's not the kind of thing I'll enjoy watching it, like, you know, several times. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's Girl. my review. So I have a question. Like, when does Captain America show up? Believe me, if he <laughs> did, I'd be a lot happier. <laughs> The be the review would be a bit different too. <laughs> what would you rate it? I uh, like like what uh, like like five talk like five like one to five tacos kind of a thing. I mean, if you want to do tacos, I was gonna one say to ten, one. whatever. You yeah, know. like how would you like, like if you know. okay? I will put it at seven out of ten. Fill the louds. <laughs> nice. Um, seven That's out of ten the- of those. Yeah, wow. that, that, so it was it was good, but like I, because there was the issues I had with it, I gave it a seven. No, I mean that's hey, I, I seven just symbols out of ten wars. All right, gotcha. <laughs> seven <laughs> seven new orders. <laughs> <laughs> out of well, ten th- dawns. <laughs> that was th- thank you for that uh, metal critic. <laughs> 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 well, as anyone knows, we are a nerd community here and while a lot of things we do it deals with star wars and while you're up there Metso, mm-hmm. star wars outlaws i know you yeah. covered this on a couple of nerdy oh, news yeah 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 <laughs> hang on a second and we have the gameplay trailer footage what were your thoughts on this okay so there was a gameplay trailer that came out because i didn't see that when i tried to google oh sorry story trailer Okay, yeah. So I was like, wait a second, because part I mentioned that kind of like I haven't played a Star Wars game in a very long time. Like the last time I played one was the prequels one with Qui Gon and and Obi Wan. Oh man! Um, so it was a long time ago. Like the ones with Cal Kestis and stuff. I haven't played any of those, and I'm kind of tempted to get them and play them on the channel. Really good. Um, because I really don't know his story. I love the actor (laughs) that plays him. Um, the graphics look amazing. The trailer itself looks like a pretty awesome movie. I think the downside to the trailer itself is that since we haven't seen any gameplay yet, that's what you're like when you're a player, you see more of the gameplay than you do of the cutscenes, of course. And so not seeing gameplay, I'm kind of like hesitant to jump at, oh, it's gonna be great. 
I mean, sure, it, it may look great, but how will it feel? Will the mechanics work? You know, that kind of stuff. We mm -hmm. don't have those details yet, but I think it looks really cool. My son yeah. also thinks her little companion looks like an axolotl that lives on land. That is precisely <laughs> what it is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He goes, and I, I'm watching it right here this morning. Like, I'm watching it here at my computer, and he's right here on the bed, and he goes, outlaws. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes hey that looks like an axolotl i was like you're right <laughs> it, it's something that i'd like to play uh actually i'd like to play the other ones as well on the channel eventually i yeah i was gonna say i thought that i i feel like really similar to mezzo on this because like it looks pretty and it looks like it could be fun, but I got to see the gameplay because it 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 would be cool as an animated TV show. It's like, if it's like all we can pretty. really give is a preliminary yeah. thought since we have mm -hmm. the gameplay. Yeah, but I, right. think, I mean, and I have played a couple of things. Like I've, I've played, what is it? Fallen Order. You is that right? Should Fallen Order. Yeah, I, I've played. You, you like, played maybe parts half of, of Fallen Order. Yeah, fall, half of Fallen <laughs> yeah. Order. Uh, played all the Lego Star Wars games because, of course, Which and um, yeah. and I played like I've played like Coder. I played Coder. I played you know I I dabble in the Star Wars games. <laughs> I dabble, but yeah. So I, and I think that that's I mean I it could be cool. It could be a really really awesome game, but give us some gameplay, people. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fair enough. Should do. Uh... <laughs> I, I mean, I don't want to uh, seem too derivative, but I basically have the same opinion. It's like, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm excited for it, tentatively. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like, yeah, we need to see some gameplay. This is Ubisoft, and people are mad at them for various reasons. So Usually the same reason. I'm, well, I'm saying, you know, yeah, the... But yeah, so I don't know. I'm I'm kind of skeptical until we do see a gameplay trailer, and I'm like, okay, this is fine. This is good. I like the concept. I like the idea. I like the whole, you know, they talked about it being more like stealth based and open world and all that. And I'm like, okay, that's a great idea. Can we see it? You know. Mm. Um, but I'm I'm overall excited for it. So it'll be cool. But we'll see. I want more Wookies. <laughs> more Wookiees. Yeah, yeah, more for the Wookiees. More Wookiees and Droids and Trench Coats. <laughs> um, now, yeah. this, I believe this was pushed back. I believe it was originally supposed to come out in May for, for Star Wars mm -hmm. Celebration. It's now August 30th of this year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of controversy about the, the gold price, the price of the standard being a hundred and ten dollars nearly double what it should be the standard is, is like 79.99 at this point in time um and it's ubisoft which means you have to be online to play it because they won't let you play it not being by yourself without internet um that being said do i have it pre-ordered absolutely i do <laughs> <laughs> uh will i play it I have a huge backlog of, 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 of games now. So the answer is eventually. <laughs> eventually. Um, will I play it for Kyber Cave Productions? Yes, I will. Um, I may try doing something differently and do it on Twitch where we can see more stuff and then also have it go to YouTube where we can do um, clips and, and stuff like that. And we can do that as well. Something that we will work it out as it comes gets closer because we are now a little over four months away. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to do it. I will play it. I'd love to have a couple of people join me too uh, on screen, and we can be the outlaws ourselves. <laughs> the out outland outlaws. Yeah, and I'd love all all our Star Wars nerds to, to watch it, and all our Star Wars nerds here at Kyber Cave, and even Distance. I'm sure Phil's going to play it over at Distance Learning. Ooh, um, we could do a crossover. Have you and Phil play uh -huh. with the AI. Uh, yeah, with the and <laughs> and I think it'd be interesting if we play this and watch it, and then do Easter egg revelations of the game as we play it. Ooh. Something like that, that most people now, aren't doing. That's just not been done. How dare you? 
No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's unprecedented. I, it, it's, I mean, for our channel, yeah, absolutely it is. I don't yeah. see many people that do Easter eggs of video games yeah. while playing it. Yeah. So yeah. are you going to like have like a several uh, real Ghostbuster references mm-hmm. like you of do? Course. In <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> so like I said, I'm excited. Yeah, have I played the last two Star Wars games? No, but this <laughs> tying into it. This takes place between episodes five and six. So I'm hoping maybe we'll get some Dash Rendar. If you know, Ooh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> because cool. let's get Dash Rendar and Shaz the Empire canon. Yes, mm-hmm. we, uh, we might be getting Prince Fizor. I think we've talked about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we could get Black Sun. We can definitely yeah. get all that stuff here. So I'm it's excited for canon. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. we will be doing it, some special streaming of this in some way, shape, or form, and more details will be coming forward as we have it. Woo. So, all right. Woo-hoo. So yeah. Uh, but enough of those shenanigans. It's time for should do shenanigans. It is hey. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, so I am going to be talking about a different kind of nerdiness. Uh, as is often the case with my little segments here. Uh, but I'm simply going to intro you with uh, a little a little quote, a little, a little, a little anecdote. Kadwe e kadwe, te che sim teet sim kadeu. Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else, welcome. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about kind of two things, but they're very much related. Uh, I'm going to be talking about constructed languages or conlangs and linguistics in general. Um, so, uh, basically, uh, in terms of linguistics, I really love it. It is something that I am, I am passionate about and I just find just infinitely fascinating that the way we communicate is so complex and has so many you know unwritten rules and most of us don't even think about it you know most of us don't even like like oh how does that work or whatever you know it's like it's such a a deep system we don't even know um within that uh since language tells us so much about like human psychology and history and on and these these ancient cultures and and all of these things, and, and modern culture too. You can look into a language and be like, "Oh, how did they get this word for, you know, this thing or whatever?" Oh, it comes from this, and this ties into a, you know, cultural belief they have or a, a value they have or whatever. Or you know, this is derived from this word, and so it's you know whatever, uh, or how it's formatted or whatever. It kind of tells you how people think. Like, there's a lot of scientific theories that the language you speak affects your your brain chemistry and kind of affects how you think in a certain way and it's just it's it's crazy but the amazing thing about that is that you can use it you can use all of that uh depth you can use kind of the oh it tells you about psychology or it tells you about history and all of that and if you're a person who does world building who's making a fictional world uh, you know, Tolkien's probably the pertinent example here. Uh, but, you know, obviously, George R. R. Martin did it to a certain degree. Not as formally. Obviously, it was uh, David J. Peterson who did it in the actual series. But, um, you know, and Wheel of Time did it and all of these things. So, you know, Star Wars to a certain degree. Uh, that you can use that depth you can basically make your own languages and that can then tie into the world you're making because it'll help you develop cultures and civilizations and make them feel more more real make your fictional world feel more like immersive because you're taking this really you know fascinating deep system in real life and being like well this is you know this tells you something about the culture. This tells you about the whatever. They're not just speaking English. They're speaking this, you know, other foreign language no one's ever heard before. Uh, and so it's it's just another, it's yet another tool in 
the world building's toolbox here to be able to make your world feel even more immersive. And then if people like it enough, they're going to learn your language. You know, there are people who speak Quenya and Sindarin and, you know, the old tongue and High Valyrian and, and all of that. And Hatiz as well, which you know, I have thoughts, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And so it's, it's just so fascinating and so cool that this is possible and that we're able to to understand so much about language that we're able to just recreate an affectional setting and use it as again yet another tool yet another way to immerse someone in this world and make them feel that it's real and tell even more complex and impactful stories so uh and by the way the uh little intro I gave was in one of my constructed languages, so. Wow, yay. Is that it, you're done, yay. That's, yep, that's it. Hmm, uh, have you thought about making your language, or have you? Have I thought about making a language? I, yeah. uh, as I said, the uh, beginning little mm -hmm. intro I did here is in one of my languages. Oh. So yes, I have, I have many. Uh, I was gonna say, did you hear he said one of? One of, yeah. One, wow. Uh, I think I'm up to like seven or eight now. Yeah. Uh, for various projects, mostly for one of them. But uh, <laughs> now, if you want to know more about the languages I have created, I have a little series on my channel called Con Language, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is about to end for the record. I have one more episode of it. But if you want to learn about that, I go through my uh, languages I created uh, a while back and some more recently. Uh, and kind of critique them for myself and like, oh, this didn't work, this worked, whatever, in a much more tongue-in-cheek kind of self-deprecating way. So, yeah. Awesome. You Thank you, should do for that. You're very well. And, wow, at this point in time, it's about that time to start giving her pluggables for the end of the show. Yeah. Should do while you're up. Where can people find you, follow you? Well, I, I just gave a little uh, bonus pluggable here, but... <laughs> I am SHDU Studios on YouTube and on Instagram. I do short films, music, world building, TTRPGs, and other nerdy stuff. I am also on our resident uh, phrase channel. We have a little series called Classified, where we take your favorite pop culture characters and place them into their respective D&D &D classes. We also have a companion series called Journals of the Classes, where we go through each of the D&D &D classes and their subclasses. We will have a new episode of Journals of Classes coming out soon. Very soon. I am halfway through editing it. Uh, and it will be on Sorcerer. Uh, I am also in the Kyber Cave sphere, as you can see. Uh, but also the Distance Learning sphere, our sister channel. I am on the Download on Tuesdays. The Build on Thursdays. Uh, and I'm on Kyber Cave Reductions, obviously, for the Saturday morning. You're now the very show you are watching right now. And for uh, new orders, probably saw in the intro. Awesome. Thank you. Pray. Very well. Hi. So he said a lot of the stuff. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I have my own channel. It's called Frey Girl uh, on YouTube. Uh, you can follow me at Frey Comics pretty much everywhere. And um, yeah, we do uh, classified where we take the your favorite fandoms and classify them into D and D classes. Our journals of the classes series is, you know, is currently going on. We are filming season two for classified. Uh, we still have a couple more episodes to do, but then it should be premiering soon. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's about Hopefully. it. I'm on distance nerding on Tuesdays for the download. Sometimes I show up on Thursdays for the build uh, and then we're doing our examining 97 uh, and those that's on Wednesdays right now. Uh, if you guys like that, let us know because there are other shows we'd love to uh, examine for you. Obviously not called examining, but you know, something else. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent like always. And <laughs> so, yeah, but you can find me there. I'm here on Saturday mornings. I am also part of New Order as well. So you will see my wonderfully chaotic character on that. Uh, and yeah, that's me. So her, her slightly fluffy visage. <laughs> <laughs> 
And the the char- the character that, or well, the thing that inspired me sometimes appears on it, <laughs> whether she wants to or not. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Frey. I mean, this has been four days in a row that we've been on the show. I know. Our, this is our record of most shows together in a row. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Thank you, Frey. Metzo. Hi there. I'm Metzo. Uh, Metzo JD, if you wanted to see my full name, uh, <laughs> I have my own YouTube channel that I've started uploading. Um, I'm doing three different series at the moment Minecraft, Sherlock Holmes, and Summer 58, um, which I'm all very much enjoying and I have more planned. Uh, so please check out that on social media, Twitter and Instagram. I am at Metzo JD. And, I, and I, I work here on Kyber Cave and Kyber Cave Productions. <laughs> see you tomorrow night and save awesome. rattle. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Who's our guest for tomorrow? Um, his, okay, his name is Martin Rios. He is a saber like academy instructor in Mexico. Oh, cool. Thank you, Matzo. Arriba, arriba. Aha. I am Graveyard, <laughs> co-host of the Mostly Pod Night Mostly Podcast. Let me my button. Oh wait, that's Phil. <laughs> you can follow me on all social media at pod out at night. Make sure to check out our YouTube channel where we interview people in the horror world. Uh, it's been a blast. We are just having so much fun. That's on pod out at night on YouTube. You can find me here at Kyber cave. Now that I'm back full swing two to three days a week, new, new stuff coming out, new, more shows planning out. As we said, new order, which is a show that we've all been working on. That is a brainchild of captain, our captain, and we're excited for that to come out and you guys to see it. Um, top of that, you can find me at Distance Learning on Thursdays with the build and harassing Phil with AI relentlessly on Mondays while he's gaming. So thank you everyone for joining us to yeah, and you know, for every hundred subscribers that we get, we are giving away a free lightsaber. We just gave one away this past Sunday. So Ooh. make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you like, what you just want us to nerd out on, and what you think about our shows. And as always, join our Discord. Where you can talk nerdy to us all the time and join our Patreon just for as little as a dollar a month. You can help join bye, the Chris. bye, Chris, and help you know support the channel and the higher tier that you have, the better chances you have to win a lightsaber. Ooh. Every couple, uh, every May 4th, we have one that's just coming out. And just if you haven't been a high tier at that point in time, you have to do it for three months ahead of time. So, thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Nerdy to me. Bye. Bye.